Hi everyone, I'm Brindley Zabriskie and I'm going to walk through how to use the REMA R package. So REMA stands for Rare Event Meta Analysis and it's a package that implements the method in this article here. So it's a permutation based approach for heterogene heterogeneous meta analyses of rare events. Um, so this method can work well when events are binary and rare adverse and when there's heterogeneity in the data set. So the main benefits of this method is preserving the um, type one error rate and having good confidence interval coverage. So I'm not gonna go into detail um, about the method and about kind of the results, but I did wanna show a few things. So here's um, just some plots. The first one's showing confidence interval coverage on average, and um, this yellow method is REMA. And so we can see that that um, comes really close to what we want, in this case, 95% coverage, more so than other methods. And then similarly, um, we preserve the type one error rate more so than other methods and kind of these challenging cases where we have rare events and heterogeneity. Um, so those are the benefits of using this method. And obviously there's consequences. So we're going to have larger um, confidence interval widths than other methods. Um, but, but again, that comes with the benefit of maintaining coverage and so forth. So um, how this method works, it's based on conditional logistic regression where we condition it out the nuisance parameters instead of trying to estimate them. Um, but instead of using asymptotic inference, we use a permutation-based method for inference. And that um, is, is useful when we have rare events or sparse data. So what we get is something that looks like this here, which is a dis the permutational distribution of the test statistic. And the way the test statistic is computed can be found in the paper. But for this example data, um, our observed value of the test statistic was 37. And then we permuted our meta-analysis data set a ton of times with some constraints to get all possible values of the test statistic. So we get ranges a range from 27 to 53 here. So then to get like a p-value, we could just say, okay, well, everything more extreme than 37 um, for a two-sided p-value would, would result in um, our two-sided p-value there. So that's kind of the, the gist of the method. So again, based on conditional logistic regression, but we used a permutation-based um, approach for inference instead of an asymptotic-based approach. All right, so with that, let's jump into the actual package, Rema. So we're going to use this... Um, very clean data set. So it's a um, smoking cessation, tobacco cessation um, drug. And the goal of this meta-analysis was to determine if there's um, serious cardiovascular adverse events with the use of Varen clean. So Varen clean uses is here, and then a placebo is here. And so you can see the, the um, patients who received the placebo total, and then the number who experienced a serious cardiovascular adverse event, and so forth. So there's 22 studies here. So for REMA, we can go ahead and load the package. And then if we look at the documentation, um, we can see there's just a few arguments here. The only ones that we need to specify are these four, so just the data information. So we're going to start with that, just doing a really basic um, meta-analysis. So because we're doing a ton of permutations, this can take a while to run, depending on the number of events. So the number of events is what largely drives computation time. Um, here, we're, we're looking, OK, this um, you know set of 10 here um, adds add some computation time. So this takes just over two minutes to run. So I went ahead and ran that in advance so we don't have to wait for that. So if we look at the results, we see that we have a combined odds ratio of 3.4, 95% confidence interval. That is, is pretty wide, right? That's a, a pretty big range. Um, and so that's just, again, one of the um, you know potential downsides of this method is that we're going to get a little bit more conservative results. But I mean, we're, we're pretty much guaranteed that we do maintain 95% coverage, which is nice. Um, and then our p-value that we got is 0.046. Um, so that's just kind of a really quick meta-analysis using REMA, um, but I want to go through a little bit more detail about what's going on. So if we plot this REMA object, we're going to get a plot that is the permutational distribution of the test statistic. So in this case, um, where this asterisk is, that is where our observed test statistic is. So we have an observed, observed test statistic of 34, and then a permutation distribution ranging from 20 to around, you know, a little over 40. And so to get the two-sided p-value, we can add up everything that has bars with heights less than this value. And that's how we get the, the two-sided p-value. So a benefit of this is that we, we're not assuming normality here. This, this does look fairly normal, but you can see that um, it, the, the tails are not the same, right? And so you can imagine, you know, different distributions that look a little bit differently than, than this one that are more skewed. And we kind of maintain that um, exact distribution, if you will, which is, is kind of nice. So um, let's look at some of the details here. So rare event, heterogeneous analysis method, great. Um, our two-sided p-value is returned and mid p equals true. So 
Mid.p is saying that we're going to use the mid-p correction um, when we're computing our p-value. And what that, that does is instead of taking this entire bar and adding that probability to our two-sided p-value, we just take half, half of that bar. And that re reduces conservatism, and it's been shown to work well. And so that's what we implement here in this package. Um, and then we'll go over the conditional max likelihood estimation in just a second. Um, I did want to show you everything that's in this Rema object. So um, the you know, traditional things that you put in are in there as well as your arguments. Um, TE is the odds ratio. CI is this 95% confidence number you can pull out. Um, PVAL is the p-value. Um, and then the distribution contains the test statistic and the probabilities that were in that plot. So you can get the actual data there. And then TSTAT is the observed value of the test, test statistic. Um, so that's what a uh, kind of just straightforward um, REMA implementation looks like. Um, because it takes so long to run, let's say we decided we actually wanted a um, you know, 10% alpha level instead of 5%. So instead of having to run this whole thing over again and take another two minutes in this case, um, we can just pass Rima a Rima object and it can almost instantaneously update the results um, if we change, let's say, an alpha value. So here you can see you know, our confidence interval is a little bit narrower because we changed our alpha level, alpha level there. Um, so that's nice. We can pass a REMA object in instead of the whole data. So we don't have to recompute the permutational distribution. We already have that. And so we can just change alpha. Um, and then similarly, if we didn't want to use the mid-p correction for some reason, we could turn that off without having to rerun everything. And then you can see that does make our results um, you know, more, I guess, conservative in this case. OK, so you really just need to um, put in the, the data and let REMA do its thing. Um, but again, you can actually pass in a REMA object if you need to change things afterwards. Okay, I did want to show you just two more things, but that's really the basics of this um, package. We have a few more, obviously, updates we want to do, um, but it's it's very functional now, and it, and it maps well to the paper, so you can get more details there. So here's just a made-up data set, um, just for illustration. So if I run this, you'll notice that we get an error, and it says that there's only one value in the permutational distribution of the test statistic, and so this method can't work. So that saying is in that you know um, picture, there'd be only one bar here, and so that's just the trivial case where we the observed value is the only value in the in the distribution. So in cases like this, REMA just simply won't work, and so you'll need to use a different method to analyze um, your data set. Um, so here's an example where REMA doesn't work, and then I also wanted to just show a quick example where we use a different estimation method for the odds ratio. So again, I just made this data set up. Um, if I run this, and then we can plot it, take a look. So this only has two values in the um, permutational distribution for the test statistic, and our observed value is 24. So whenever we have an observed value that's at the minimum or the maximum of the permutational distribution, then we cannot use conditional maximum likelihood. So if we go back to um, this, First one we did, you can see that we use conditional maximum likelihood to get the odds ratio confidence interval. Great. But we can't do that in this case, where we're at the, in this case, the maximum of the test um, statistic distribution. So instead of using conditional maximum likelihood estimation, we instead use the median and biased estimate. Um, so when we do that, you'll see, get some slightly interesting results. Um, so see here it says we're using the median and biased estimate. Great. And then our odds ratio, we actually get an odds ratio, which is nice. Um, and we get a lower bound in this case for the confidence interval. And then we go to infinity for the upper bound. And so that'll always be the case when we're at the min or max. Um, we'll have infinity somewhere in there. We do get results. We get a p-value. It's just a different way to do that estimation. And again, more results are in the paper. But that, that'll that be the two different options you'll have for this method part. And that's that's basically it. That's Rema. So if you guys have any questions, um, please, please feel free to reach out. If you want to um, kind of check out more of Rema, here's the CRAN and the GitHub repo. Um, this is the article, um, which the package is based off. And then the data set that we use for illustration is um, linked here as well. So again, please feel free to reach out. I hope that was helpful.